Those are the numbers, Tim. Give us the read. Okay, good morning. So the summer was really a month of transition for sure. Uh, in November, we indicated that there was some movement towards a better equilibrium between demand and supply. In December, for sure, we saw that. You saw a slight improvement on the employment number. And more importantly, you saw a pretty significant decline on the supplier delivery number, which indicates that suppliers are having a little bit easier of a time meeting factory demand. So the summer was a really good month. I mean, the attitude around shortages and lead times improved. About 10% of my comments indicated that it was getting better. Mm -hmm. And on the same side, on the employment side, steady and slow progress. But you know, on top of that, demand was really strong again, too. So demand is still remaining elevated. Tim, good to see you. Happy New Year. What do you think the effect of Omicron is going to be and how short term do you think it's going to be? Oh my, well, that's the real story. So we had a similar problem back in March and April and in uh, May and June when we saw the, you know, the collapse of the manufacturing economy and then the climb out on that big sharp V. And what's, you know, what happens is, is that even if you're collecting information on a monthly basis, when things happen and change on a weekly basis, our numbers don't truly reflect that. So in the last week, there's been a lot of indications that there's a lot of absenteeism. People are testing positive. Even though they went from a 10-day quarantine to a five-day quarantine, that's going to be a lot of call-outs, a lot of no-shows, and it's probably going to lead towards more labor disruption in January and February. So mm. you know, here we are again. We had a similar thing in the August-September time frame, and we're probably going to see the same thing again. Suppliers are going to struggle in January and February, maybe even into March. Demand will remain high, so that supplier delivery number will go up. The employment number will probably stay flat. So this is kind of the way of life, I think, for a period of time because, you know, the variants are not going away. So it feels like then, or do we ever hit peak supply chain issues or are we just going to go in waves? I think at the present time we're in waves. I was hoping that, you know, with the last couple of months that we were actually getting closer to that equilibrium. But based on everything I'm hearing in the last week, there's just a lot of 20% infection rates on the test side. The good thing is the hospitals are not overwhelmed at, at yet. But this is a lot of kids are, I mean, in my local area here, they called off school because of bus driver shortages. So, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of that, and that's going to lead towards absenteeism on the factory floor, not only for our panelist companies, but also for our suppliers. Tim, how do you think it's going to be this year? How difficult is it going to be? You're kind of painting a picture of volatility in terms of the data that we're going to be getting. Are we just going to see kind of rolling factors, rolling from one part of the manufacturing sector to another? Uh, supply bottlenecks here taking a while to impact supply bottlenecks over here. How, how clean is the data right now that you're seeing? I think we're starting to develop a pretty strong pattern here. We've had several different variants come out. And we've had several different waves here on the, on the uh, supply input side. So I think we're going to see this continue for a period of time. The good thing is that every time you have a disruption in being able to meet demand, that demand is generally available to be satisfied in the future. So our customer inventory number, although it came up slightly to about uh, 30, we're still you know, well below where we want to be, 46. The backlog is still at a 63, 64 level. And new export orders are starting to grow a bit. So you know, as, as long as demand stays strong, we can deal with all the rest of it. And, you know, the key is, again, labor. It has been labor for a year and a half. It will remain labor, and it probably will remain labor until we've really, you know, succeeded in, in battling this thing where it's a no-show. Uh, no okay, let's talk about labor. So the labor index hit uh, the highest level uh, in about eight months, rising to 54.2. Can you give us some insight as to how easy or difficult it is for uh, manufacturers to hire workers and what they have to do to get them? Okay, my higher fire ratio on the comments was about 10 or something to one. So we're still, everybody's, you know, really trying hard to hire. Uh, they're dealing with 30% uh, turnover. 30% of my comments were turnover related. So they're still dealing with this gerbil wheel where they hire two, they lose one. You know, the next week they hire two, they lose two. And that probably will continue as, they, as everybody chases wages. The, the comments, the opinion about month-to-month -month improvements flattened out in the month of December compared to November. So... 7% of my comments in November indicated it was easier to hire in November versus October. The same comments came through in, uh, in December. And you can bet now January that number is going to decline. So, you know, labor continues to be the issue. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to battle our way through it in 2022. But, you know, overall, our forecast indicated the same thing. Business forecast indicates that we're going to see a 7% revenue increase in manufacturing, the optimism around the business confidence for 2022. Very high. This is another bump in the road, Omicron variant. The good thing yep. is it's not as lethal as the prior variant, but 
it is causing a lot more people to be out of work. Mm. Tim, final quick question from me. Let's talk about working capital. What do inventories look like right now? Well, I think that's probably the reason why we saw the inventory number come down to 56. December is typically, uh, you know, the biggest month of the year where people try to manage cash flow. So they're probably trying to make sure that they relieve all the work and process to get the billing, and we're seeing the inventory account come down a little bit. So I would think, though, probably in January, February, we'll see that inventory number come back up again, maybe a point to a point and a half.